Hey guys, welcome back to Ari the Stag. TR Tony here, sat in a corner of the garage on a bit of a wet and windy Saturday afternoon. Uh, nevertheless, managed to uh, turn over the V8 engine behind me, uh, make sure the uh, internals keep uh, keep lubricated and all the rest of it. So uh, that's uh, all looking good. Um, what have we been up to? Well, uh, the uh, radiator went away earlier this week. You may remember we worked on the uh, stag radiator that's gone off for repair um, so looking forward to receiving that back at some point in the not too distant future separately last weekend uh, i decided to do a bit of work on the indicator stalk which uh, has uh, well i'll show you in just a minute it's been kind of waggling around for a while and uh, flashing people at its own random when it decides to so clearly it wasn't um, a desirable uh, kind of mod uh, so uh, yeah let's just go over I'll, I'll talk you through what happened um, what i thought was going to be a simple job wasn't but uh, let's go over and have a look all right, so this is the uh, the problem here. We've got the uh, horn and indicator and light switch uh, waggling around like a sausage in a dustbin currently. So clearly that's not working. It's very hard to indicate or use any kind of sensible lighting. It appears to be a bit of a fault on the stag, I think. So my job today is to try and change it over and see what we can do to correct that. First things first, get the stag emblem off the uh, boss of the steering wheel and then um, the plan is to undo that very significant bolt and pull the steering wheel off to see if we can get at the gubbins underneath. Wish me luck. Okay so just having used a 27mm um, socket on there the bolt has come off very very easily, a uh, little nip and you can see there it's twisting off to remove the steering wheel from the steering drive itself. A little bit stuck so I'm gonna to have to give it a tug if I can. And there we are, nut removed. Put that to one side. Let's see how easy or difficult this steering is to get off now. With a good tug I'm hoping it will come clear. And uh, I don't know if the two are connected. There's a release uh, lever here where you can drop the steering column which I've just done so it's dropped down and uh, with a good tug the steering wheel comes off and as you can probably see in there it's splined so that stops it turning around around against the splined steering column shaft here so now I'm going to try and take off these um, various plastic covers to see if I can get the innards to get at the uh, malevolent switch that's causing us so much problems and a slightly different perspective here. We've got to get underneath and underneath there. I think you can see there are some screw holes. So I've just got to remove those to get the plastic cover to release from the cowling. And you can begin to see the issue here now. It's all waggling about, as we said. Right, bit of a fiddle, but uh, those two, their actual bolts came out with a small screwdriver. There's a third one supposed to be in there, but I think that's missing. And uh, basically the cowling comes off the top like so. Um, there's your light switch there, and um, here's the offending bracketry here on the, on the stalk. Um, looks like it's connected with some bolts through here, so I guess I'm going to have to release that. And... Uh, See if we can put the new one in. So far, so good, he says. <laughs> so just something to be mindful of. I've just pulled the um, the bottom cowling off, and that's where the key goes for the ignition. Um, this little bit of plastic has just broken off the top of here. Looks like a bit of a a fault. Um, could maybe get some super glue or something just to rebuild that because that's obviously holding the cowling to the underside of the steering column so I'll need to do that in just a minute. Um, the other, see if you can spot this difference. Right this is the new one here, all right that's the new switch gear all looking very nice and clean, cost about <clears throat> I think about 85 quid, 90 quid, something like that. Um, I think from EJ Ward or someone like that so uh, thank you for that they've done really well and now if I compare with um, what is actually currently in situ I'll let you look at that for about four or five seconds 
and uh, if you can tell me what's wrong with it, um, I think you deserve a badge of honour. Um, and I'm sure one or two of you who are miles ahead of me already have spotted this uh, expert uh, bodge involving a bit of elasticated knicker elastic or something to try and hold the blinking thing back. Look at that, what a bodge. So I've been driving around, I wonder why it broke all of a sudden. It's the knicker elastic having broken off here. And look, here it is, coming off the blinking steering column. How bad is that? What a bodge. So um, I'm glad I looked at this and uh, let's hope the new one fits. Right, so I've had a closer look and um, I was right, the bolt here on the top does hold this bracket in. The only thing is the head is actually tucked behind this one. So I've actually got to take this cluster off first where the bolts are here. You can see the head here and then I can get to these and release this side to then replace it. Joy. Yeah, nearly off and then we can crack on with the other side then. Let's pull that free. That's just unwinding until it releases. Bear in mind I'm doing this single-handedly, holding the camera. So that's the um, wiper um, uh, stalk and mechanism there. So that's now released from there. Those bolts obviously come out of there. There's a long one and a short one. And uh, now we can get to this side here and replace. Just note that this uh, kind of um, half circle bracket, the bolts for the offside horn and lights go on the outside hole and uh, the other ones go the other way on the inside nearest the dash, just so I remember when I put it back together. Now, to get to the um, socket, um, which is actually down this long loom here, which looks uh, very, very straightforward of course when I first open the box, it's, oh, it's just a plug and play. And what that means is, um, excuse all the things dangling down, you've got to get underneath the steering column and take out this cowling underneath and that's uh, not only got lots of detritus, spider's webs and various things that will crawl out of there. Um, there's two little uh, posi drive screws in there and at the very bottom there's a bolt and nut with a spacer involved in there and that actually is north of the steering column about so that actually cradles and holds it up um, over the top of the steering column. So I've got that out now. Um, sorry it's getting a bit jiggity pokety with the old camera but um, it's a bit tight down here for a six foot two bloke um, but um, that's what I need to do now to see if I can now replace that socket fingers crossed and it's around about this point that you start to think nickel elastic would be a better solution um, having now sprawled the uh, dashboard all over the driver's foot well I don't know if you can see here but the actual loom goes down that metal channel underneath here so I've got to somehow drop this out so I can get to the plug which is way under here somewhere um, and relay this loom through that metal casing so that means I think I've got to drop the steering column which is a single bolt there and then see if we can get into it that way gosh didn't know it was going to be this much fun so uh, 3 16th spanner on here just releases it and in actual fact it was only hand tight so I'm pretty glad I had a look at this no wonder we should we need MOTs guys these days you know I know this probably isn't going to cause a major problem on the road but if cars are put together like this how on earth do you expect accidents not to blink and happen it uh, makes me wonder here on the other side is the lever for the adjuster um, where are we down here somewhere there we are so that's the back end of that bolt so if I pull it out the steering column should just he says without breaking anything Ugh. right so I'm just interrupting proceedings at the moment because I've been really struggling to get this bolt out here which is where the um, adjuster sits uh, on the face of it you should be able to just pull that bolt through however in the deep dips and distant depths you might just be able to see there is a roll pin that screws into this that needs pulling out and that's what we're just trying to currently do 
putting it back out, thus releasing the bolt, thus allowing us then to drop that cradle out to put the wires in behind and make sure we're all okay. Um, I just managed to get a bit of purchase with a, a vice grip, mini vice grip, and I'm hoping to pull it out. It's been a right pig, been bashing it from behind with a little nail and a hammer underneath the dashboard. This is not an easy job, and you can see why someone had tried to fix it with knicker elastic. God, what a hassle. Okay, nearly there, and if you can just see down here, that is the roll pin that is blocking that bolt coming off. This one here has never been there. This is one I've nearly knocked it out. I've certainly got a good centimetre out now, so I'm hoping any second we'll be able to pull that away and then release the bolt and then drop the cradle and then put in the wiring uh, to replace the switch. And happy days. There it is. That was causing the problem and why that bolt would not be extricated from this hole. I'm hoping this now will wiggle out, which it does, no problem at all. We can drop the steering column and take out that bit that holds the rest of it in. Flipping egg, what a palaver. All right, so that bracket is now releasing, as you can see, it's gonna drop that bottom casing off and we can replace the wiring that goes back to the loom underneath the dash there. But until I did that, this wiring would not be released, but now obviously it is. Uh, there's a little spring in there as well. I must remember to put the spring back in between those two clamps. And uh, very pleased Team Ari the Stag effort to get it out and uh, back in now. And there it is on the floor, and that's where all the wires went, as you can see. And now I can easily access the offending switch. Hurrah! And really interesting as you go through this, I uh, start to understand how these mechanisms work. They've got the switch gear fitted here. The um, It isn't on, um, but uh, horn still works, as you can just hear. And um, if I were to signal uh, left, I think, then you can see the switch gear moves. There's a little clever plastic tab here that engages with the cam that turns around. Um, and as you turn it around, of course, it lifts this bit here and you can see it cancels. So it's a very clever cancelling method. Uh, go right, same thing, turn right, and eventually when you come back, it pulls it back So to neutral. So that's a very clever gizmo and it's just operated by that cam on the steering column itself, which obviously is fixed. So quite clever and I've learned something else today. Top work. All right, after much cursing, it's all back in and um, actually works quite nicely now. Certainly more definitely about the indicators, both ways. And um, you'll have to take it as red, full beam works, as well as flash. And that's feeling really nice and solid now. So I'm uh, very pleased. Um, just got a couple more bolts to get to fix this back in place. Um, and uh, just one or two other little tightening things, but we are ready to rock and roll. So end of a long Sunday. It's taken five hours. All right, so hope you found that of interest. I know it was a little bit more um, in the weeds than I'd ever anticipated. I really thought it was gonna be a simple job to change that indicator stalk over. Uh, hopefully it's given one or two of you some inspiration on how to do it yourselves. Uh, the big surprise inevitably was that roll pin arrangement, the two roll pins in that locking bolt that goes across the under the dashboard, which holds the steering column. And until you can get that clear, of course you can't release uh, the cradles for the looms underneath. So uh, hopefully that's been useful for some. And uh, if you're doing the job yourself, you won't go through the pain and anguish that we did last weekend. However, the job is fixed. We've been for a test drive and we're all good. So that's fantastic. Okay, a um, couple of other things to remember, I suppose, uh, as ever, if uh, you like what you see on the channel, please feel free to uh, subscribe. It's uh, great to have more on board, uh, sharing the classics dream. And also, of course, if you haven't got one already, then the uh, Ari the Stag Badge of Honour is freely available. All you've got to do is go to our website, 
uh, which I'll probably put something underneath on the uh, screen in just a minute uh, to enable you to register and then we'll get you one of those free of charge in the post, stick it on your car, uh, take a picture and stick it on our Facebook group if you like and maybe you'll get your car featured on a Saturday Sockets which also goes out, it's an email on a Saturday that we send by joining up. So uh, look forward to seeing you online there. Um, yeah, one final thing I suppose was the Sting. You may have seen the previous video uh, to Simon over in Dubai. Uh, he very kindly sent us a thank you video uh, to finish off uh, his birthday. So congratulations Simon on your birthday once again. He's a great sport. Uh, also to Angie and Terry over in Perth who uh, helped me collaborate and get all that organised for the previous film. Uh, but I'll uh, finish off today with uh, uh, young Simon's video as he uh, disappeared over the sunset. <laughs> Horizon in his beautiful stag. Uh, well, I won't spoil his thunder. Let me uh, let me show you in just a second. But suffice to say, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe, as we say again. And we'll see you online on Harry the Stag very soon. All the best, guys. Cheers for now. Over to Simon. Stag brothers. Hello all. A lovely surprise this morning. We uh, got a video dedicated to to me, which was quite remarkable. So thank you very much, M and D and Harry the Stag and the team, the Antoni. As you can see we've got the badge of honour, very proudly placed on the side window there. We're proud to be wearing the merchandise. Thank you very much, everyone. Got the mug, past twelve, so it's full of beer. We've got the key ring, and of course we've got the bubble hat. Yeah. So Harry the Stag, well done. And uh, we look forward to many more videos with big fans. Harry the Stag.